So if I wanted, like on, we've got a reservation here. I heard there's not as many opportunities as you'd like. Uh, I don't know who makes policy on reservations, and I apologize for not knowing your politics better. But if somebody here were to say, we would like people to take some chances on this reservation. One way to do it would be to say, you're not going to do it because on average, I know I'll make $10 if it works and zero if it doesn't, but I, I just can't afford to pay five. But if somebody said, well, would you pay three fifty? But then you'd never lose. You'd only pay. You'd pay three fifty every year. Was most you'd lose. You'd never lose the five. Well, then you'd have to pay an insurance company how much? A dollar fifty. You'd have to pay me a dollar fifty. Did you know that's where insurance companies make their money? So when an insurance company charges you a, a $600 premium for car insurance, what, they're, what, what you're doing is you're trading them. They're saying, if you get in a car wreck and it costs you $20,000, we're going to pay it. In return, you pay me $600 a month or, or a year every year. You see what I'm saying? But they expect to make money off of that. If they get the $600 every year, they're going to make more than the $20,000 because they couldn't make a living, right? So you're selling your risk to somebody else. Well, what I want to know is I want to know she's risk neutral because she was willing to pay what it's worth. You were risk averse, so you're not quite willing to pay what it's worth, so you want to avoid risk. You see what I'm saying? If you had told me $6, you would have been, can anybody guess what I would have called her? What if you pay more than something's worth? A, a risk take, well, we're all risk takers, but that's very close. We would call her a risk lover. Okay, now does everybody get the concept? If I know you're a risk lover, you're probably going to be broke at the end of your life. That's the kind of people who have gambling addictions and all of that. You know, you tell them, um, hey, look, this has a certain amount of risk. It only pays off half the time, and, and you, you know, you, you, you're willing to pay too much for it. Can anybody think of something that... I don't know if they have this in New Mexico, but what's something that we pay a dollar for very often that really has an expected value of only 50 cents? How about a lottery ticket? Do they have a lottery here? You know what I mean, though, by lotteries? Okay. You pay a dollar for a lottery ticket, and, you know, if you win a million dollars or whatever, but do you know the expected value is 50 cents? Did you know that? So the lottery, they take in all the money from all the $1 tickets, and they pay out only half, a, half of it out. So, you know, that's the kind of thing you really like. You know, I, I want to spend a dollar for a chance at 50 cents. But really, it's because you love the thrill of the chance of actually getting a million dollars. But you know that if you buy a lottery ticket every day of your life, what do you expect? If you spend a dollar every day of your life, you expect it to make back 50 cents of it. You see what I'm saying? On average. You can't hope to be that one person who makes it. Okay, if you are, then you're a risk lover. Now again, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, and I know people who do this. Do you know this kind of person? The kind of person that's maybe 50 years old and they're in their eighth uh, venture on business. You know, their their eighth business and the other seven failed, but this one's going to make it. Do we? Does anybody know somebody like that? I do. I know lots of people like that. That's a risk lover. They just they they maybe they, maybe sooner or later they'll get that business that's going to make them five million dollars. But you know they lost a lot in the interim trying to do it. Okay. Or there's that person that's so risk averse they won't try anything. Okay. So we want to know whether you're risk averse, risk neutral, or risk uh, loving. A risk averse person prefers an investment with a lower but a certain payoff. So using this example, if I gave you the choice of the gourds that make $10 a zero, but that's an average of $5, or I gave you a choice of growing uh, watermelons that make $4, you would choose, you would choose watermelons. Because $4 is $4 every time. Even though I knew that I'd make more with gourds, but, but gourds vary too much. You see what I mean? I don't, I don't like that variance. A risk neutral person only cares about the exact payoff. So, for example, is, is your name Rose? Yes. So Rose wanted to, you know, she, she has some, some, some land, and like say the blue corn you're talking about, so you want to plant another acre of blue corn, 
the way you'd go about it in a risk management plan is you'd say, well, if I do it, I expect there's an 80% chance I'll sell all of it, and a 20% chance I'll only sell half of it. You see what I mean? You could make an expectation about that. And then if you're willing to pay that amount of money, you're risk neutral. Risk neutral people make the most money in their lives because they're not paying the insurance company the $1.50 to avoid the risk. Because you've got to pay someone else if you avoid the risk. If any of you raise cattle, if you take your cow and you put it in a feedlot, have you ever heard of retained ownership where you, know, you can keep the cow and pay them money and they'll feed the cow? And then when they sell the cow to, the, to, the, to, to be slaughtered, you get all the money? Have you heard of that kind of deal? Okay, well that's one deal. You can retain the ownership. So essentially you just put it in a feedlot and they feed it for you, they medicate it and so forth, and then you keep the money. That's more risky. Why? Because if the price falls and it doesn't cover the feed bill, tough luck. But the feedlot would also just take the cow today and they'll give you a lower price. So if you want to take a chance, if you did that over your lifetime and kept paying the feedlot, over your lifetime you would have made more money than if you just let the feedlot have the cow. See what I'm saying? But what would have happened is a few times you would have been sorry you did it. Because when you did it, the price of cows would have fallen, they would have, price of corn would have risen, you would have fed this cow for a really high price, and you wouldn't have made your money back. When you run a business, I need to know whether you're risk neutral, risk averse, or whatever, or you need to know. We've devised a tool that's going to give you a numerical score. And I'm going to ask each of you to go through the tool, and it's just like the coin toss, okay? So Rose, if I say if it's tails, it's zero, if it's heads, it's $10, then it's expected to be worth what? Five, right? It's worth right in between those two numbers. If you're risk averse and you offer me only four, then I can start getting an idea of how risk averse you are. So I'm gonna ask you all to fill out a form and you're gonna do it on the computer and it's gonna give you a numerical score and we're gonna see where you all land, okay? Before you go do this, I want, I want you all to watch where I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click up here, estimate my risk preference. Remember earlier when I flipped the coin? Okay, now I'm, I've got at the top there, at this part, it says estimate my risk, it says you have an opportunity to grow onions. I chose onions because onions really is one of those crops, makes or breaks. You, you know, if you plant onions every so often, you make a fortune and every so often you lose a fortune. So it's about a 50-50 shot you're gonna make money with onions. Now remember by Rose telling me she'd pay five dollars and what's your name? Darcy, that's right. Darcy told me he would pay three fifty. By knowing those two numbers, I know a little bit about you, but one question isn't quite enough for me to know enough to be, care be sure whether you're really more risk averse than she is. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a similar thing up here. Now notice line number one up there, it says you have a decision uh, if, if you plant onions and there's no crop, which could happen, in other words, the weather could be bad, you're going to make zero. If there is a crop, you're going to make 100. Now, isn't that a lot like the coin toss? What's the expected value then? Do you see it there, expected payoff? $50, right? What I want you to do is take that slider bar to the right, and I want you to move it. And remember, uh, whoever's at the computer, one of you do it, and then the other three do it after that person, okay? So Rose, you can do it after, and Darcy, you can do it after these two, which I don't know their names, sorry. sorry. So I'm, now watch what I do. I'm gonna say that I would pay $46 for that bet. That makes me what? Risk averse, risk loving, or risk neutral? Risk averse, because I'm not quite willing to pay $50. That would have been like $4.60 in the example we did earlier. It's worth $50, but I'm only willing to pay $4.60. Does that, that makes me a little bit risk averse, okay? Now, has everybody slid the bar to what they'd be willing to pay for that first bet? Now, on the second row, the numbers have changed. Now, notice in my case, it's between 0 and 46 for the second choice. How, the average of that would be 23. So if I flip a coin and flip a heads, I get $46. So my average would be $23. Okay? 
I'm willing to pay $20 for that bet. Okay, so I slide it over to 20. So slide your second bar over to what you're willing to pay compared to the expected value for the second one. Are people getting following this? Now do the third bar. In my case, notice it's a bet. If I flip a tails, I'm going to get $46. Do you see that in row three? If I flip a heads, I'm going to get $100. $46. $100, an expected value of 73. Everybody see that? Okay, well how much would I pay for that? Man, I'll pay a little more for that. I think I'll pay 66 for that. Even though it's worth 73, I'm just, I, don't like the, I don't like the odds of losing um, $46. Now I'm gonna go to the last row and my bet is 43, my, my expected value is 43, I'm gonna put in a 36. Okay, what I want each of you to do is do all four rows and tell me when you're done. All right, now notice right here, risk preference score, mine's a .64. I come over here between zero and one, I'm somewhat between risk neutral and somewhat risk averse. So I'm a little bit risk averse, that's where I fall. What's your number? How much? 0. 0.26? Then you're pretty risk neutral, okay? Meaning you're not that afraid of risk. Okay. The way I utilize this is if I'm an insurance company, I can take more money away from you than I can you. Does that make sense? Everybody understand that? Because he wants to avoid risk, okay? Or, but the other way to think about it is he should go into a less risky business than him. Or if you have a risky business, you should try to get rid of as much risk as you can out of that risky business. Farmers aren't very risk averse or they wouldn't be farmers, right? What would they be? They'd be in some cushy job that was always the same. So it's not very surprising you're not very risk averse. Now I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let you do it on your own if you want to, the rest of you in the interest of time. But I want you to know too, if you go to the website, we also have a quiz you can take it'll give you another score because no score is perfect you know in other words these measurements aren't very accurate so you need to do it as many ways as you can in the book we list a website and I think for only sixteen dollars you can take this test actually designed by a psychologist and they'll tell you how risk averse you are and it's even norm for whether you're female or male or any, and things like that so uh, you can really get at these scores and figure out whether you're risk averse to me, one of the most important things to do, is, especially if you're a married couple running a business, is figure out whether you kind of match each other or don't match, and it might, might reduce some fights.